Good morning and welcome to Unity. Today's prelude will be a 2001 Space Odyssey commemorating the 55th anniversary of the Apollo moon, land, moon landing. And that took place on July 20th, 1969. Our musicians today are Michael Lindemeyer, organist, me, Lori Jameson, percussionist, and Catherine Lenton, percussionist. So if you're ready, let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. Thank you, musicians. Welcome, church, to worship this morning. Bienvenidos a todos. Special welcome to guests who are with us, and welcome to you who are worshiping with us online today. My name is Pastor Kevin. It's a blessing to be here with you all as the Holy Spirit gathers us together in Christ's presence, in giving witness to his resurrection, that through him God lives and reigns today and always. We continue our summer theme of studying scripture. We're in the book of Ephesians. Our theme is gift of life. And our scripture message today under that theme is new humanity. At this time, I'd like to introduce for our online worshipers. Today's uh, online minister is Laura McVann. She's here in person up at the computer station. Um, and uh, everyone who's with us in person, if you'd like to be part of our online ministry, just simply log into our Facebook Live video and make sure you mute your device and then interact with each other, uh, worshipers here, worshipers online, because it's through our personal relationships and interactions that the Holy Spirit moves and works and knits us together as one congregation in Jesus' mission. We have a special occasion um, during worship today. We will be receiving new members so that'll take place uh, after the sermon, after the hymn of the day. I'll call them up and in introduce them. Um, and then we'll have a, a covenant uh, of sharing in Jesus' mission here through Unity Lutheran Church together. And now, church, we begin our worship in the presence of our living God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering hymn today is number 502. The king of love my shepherd is. 
I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we sing together song 502. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people that we may embody the justice and peace brought into the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with the Heavenly Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Please be seated for our readings from Scripture today. Good morning. The first reading is from Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 34 and 53 through 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Genesaret, moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was and wherever he went into villages or cities or farms. They laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might even touch the fringe of his cloak, and all who, were, who touched it were healed. The word of the Lord. We sing together Psalm 23. The psalms can be found in the hymnal if you look on the front of the pages, there's red dashes, and after the final red dash is where the psalms are located. Our cantor, Rachel Hahn, will lead us by singing the odd number verses, and we respond by singing the even number verses of Psalm 23. Our second scripture reading is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. So then, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision, by those who are called the circumcision, is a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in the place of the two, thus making peace. 
and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers, aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of the Lord. Divisions among people, the value of life, and reconciliation. We're going to dive into this scripture reading from the Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. Its key concepts include divisions among people, the value of life, and reconciliation. To look back at what Paul had in mind, we're going to look forward a little bit. Five years, actually. To the year 2029. That's an important year for humanity, at least in the world of science fiction adventure movies. If you're familiar with Arnold Schwarzenegger's The Terminator film franchise, then you might know that what happens in 2029? That is according to Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Machines with AI artificial intelligence, became sentient and started a war against humans, setting off a nuclear holocaust. By the year 2029, the war against the machines has ravaged the planet, and the AI network, Skynet, sends back in time an upgraded new T-1000 Terminator machine to kill the leader of the human resistance, John Connor, when he was back then just a kid, as a preemptive strike to ensure a future victory. Now see, I know all those details are accurate because I asked AI. <laughs> but all is not lost. The resistance movement also sent back in time a refurbished T-800 model that looks a lot like Arnold Schwarzenegger, programmed to protect the young John Connor. Through the T-800's interactions with John and his mother, the refurbished machine came to take on human qualities, even willing to sacrifice itself in realizing the value of human life and the importance of protecting human existence. As they are on the run from their futuristic attacker, there is a scene in the movie where young John is helping the T-800 fix their car's engine. When John notices two kids, these kids, they seem to be playing at first, but then their play turns into fighting. John says to the T-800, we're not going to make it, are we? And to clarify that he wasn't just talking about their own personal efforts to escape the futuristic killing machine, he says in observing these kids fighting each other, we're not going to make it, are we? People, I mean. The T-800, Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice replies, it's in your nature to destroy yourselves. Ouch. Now, John Connor's question has, in recent years, become a popular meme as a form of commentary. It's often used 
as a joke to express in a humorous way a sense of becoming resigned to a sense of impending doom. It might be a picture you see, a, a sign at a gas pump that reads, do not insert into mouth. We're not going to make it, are we? <laughs> People, I mean. There's a warning label on a pizza box, open before eating pizza. We're not going to make it. People, I mean. Cubs fans, after Craig Council became the manager, bragging about how their team will win the World Series this year. We're not going to make it. People, I mean. It helps to laugh when we are reminded that we humans have a knack for doing things that aren't very smart and that maybe it actually is our nature to destroy ourselves. We've got human-induced climate change, wars and conflicts, divisions among people, and dehumanizing those perceived to be different. Left to our own devices, the observation that we're not going to make it could well be accurate. But thankfully, we're not alone. And it's not all up to us. We hear in our scripture for today that, you know, that refurbished T-800 isn't the only one who knows the value of human life and the importance of protecting human existence, even to the point of sacrificing himself to ensure it. We read there St. Paul reminding us that though we humans have a way of dividing ourselves, Jesus breaks down the dividing wall of hostility and draws us together in his peace. No longer do our differences define us, for we are all brought into a new humanity, reconciled to God and to one another. God so values human life that just as God is pleased to dwell in the body of Jesus who is crucified by the forces of our divisions and hostility, by the spirit of the risen Christ, God likewise freely chooses to dwell in us as one body of humanity, each person created in God's image and all joined together in everlasting life. For unity in this new humanity, it is important for us to understand the gift we have been given and entrusted to share. In his letter, Paul is writing to Gentiles, people of ethnic groups different from his own. For most of us here today, we, we are part of the group that Paul is addressing. He says, remember how you were once outsiders, not part of the covenant people of God. Remember how your culture, your customs, your traditions were considered you know, other than. They were considered different. They were considered outside the norm. And then remember how Christ includes you. You were not forced to assimilate into the other group's customs, traditions, or culture in order to have unity. But rather, unity is given to the insiders and to the former outsiders together by sharing the same identity in Christ. By those who are already near and those who were once far off and now brought close together, we have the same access in the Holy Spirit to God. Christ makes both groups into one by creating in himself one body of people instead of two. Christ makes peace by overcoming the dividing walls we put up against each other, which are acts of hostility against God. So we, who were once far off, are no longer aliens or strangers, but brought together, we receive the peace of Christ. 
We proclaim the peace of Christ by including other people in the same way we have been included. Not forcing people to assimilate to our preferred customs or traditions or culture, but rather seeing the image of God in them and celebrating the peace we share in Christ's embrace. In giving witness, we prioritize what it takes to proclaim this peace. Sharing life together as the household of God. Speaking the love language of serving. Singing the praises of God in many cultures and traditions and customs of God's people. We are not alone. Together, with Christ being the cornerstone of a living temple, we are not left to our own devices. It is not all up to us by ourselves. Wherever we notice there are divisions and dehumanizing hostilities, right there we are proclaimers of Christ's peace, a new humanity. We are going to make it. People, I mean. Thanks be to God. We sing together our hymn of the day, song 611. I heard the voice of Jesus say. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we sing together song 611. be seated, um, and I invite those who are joining our congregation to please come forward with your hymnals in hand, and the rest of us church, keep those hymnals handy, because in the inside of the back cover, we will together affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. If you would please just come uh, right in front of the step and turn and face the congregation. And let me introduce... If you haven't already had the good pleasure to meet um, Mary Dukes Hamrick, Charlie Bauer, and Gracie Hansen. So thank you all for uh, being with us and affirming in your faith journey God's calling to join us in Jesus' mission. 
And so we'll have a covenant together, ask two simple questions. The first being, in our baptism, we had a covenant created by God. Uh, We would uh, follow Jesus in his mission, come to the Lord's Supper, proclaim the good news, and love our neighbor. Is this your intention today to live out your faith, your life of discipleship? And on your faith journey, uh, the Holy Spirit has brought you to Unity Lutheran Church. Is it your intention today to join with this congregation in the mission we share? And to all of us here today, will you support and pray for uh, these siblings in Christ uh, in joining in mission together? If so, please answer, we will. Please join me in prayer. Holy, faithful God, we do thanks for calling us each by name and giving to us the same Holy Spirit by which Jesus Christ is raised from the dead to new life. That in our words and in our deeds, we may give witness to his living and reigning among us, reconciling the whole world to you. We pray this in his name. Amen. And now if you would please turn in the inside back cover of your hymnal, let us together proclaim the faith of Christ's church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in giving praise to God as we welcome our new members of Unity Lutheran Church. Thank you all. You can return to your seats. Thank you, thank you. As we uh, stand together for our prayers today. Please stand. Rejoicing in God's promises, let us pray for the world, for the church, and for all who are in need. Each prayer petition ends, Lord, in your mercy, to which the congregation responds by saying, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God of creation, bring healing to the world with restoration of ecosystems and sustainable sources of energy. Teach us to be faithful stewards of the world you bless. Lord, in your mercy. God of all peoples, we pray for children and their families detained as part of mass arrests in El Salvador. Bring peace in places where war rages, Palestine and Israel, Haiti, South Sudan, Ukraine, and others. Break down the dividing walls of hostility among ethnic groups and nations. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, in Christ Jesus, you shepherd your people with love into peace. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit to be proclaimers of your peace. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort, send your spirit of wholeness upon all who need healing in body, mind, or soul, especially to everyone on Unity's prayer list, including Chuck, Jason, Debbie, Dennis, Tricia, Scott, Irvin, Matthew, and Pam. Lord, in your mercy. Beloved children of God, please offer any prayers you may have at this time either spoken aloud in the silence of your hearts or typed into the comments of our live stream worship video. (laughs) 
Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, you have formed us as your holy dwelling, a living temple with Christ as our cornerstone. Hold us together in the bond of your spirit with all who have given witness to your peace and now rest in your merciful presence until by your gift of new life we are reunited in the age to come. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered in the presence of our Savior Jesus, let us pray now in the words he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace among us. You may be seated. At this time, as we begin our ministry messages, I invite ushers to come forward, passing the offering plates through the pews. This is one option we have uh, for dedicating the first fruits of the blessings God gives to us, dedicated to Jesus' mission here through the church to spread God's love near and far. Other options we have include online giving through our QR code, uh, leads to our website, unitymilwaukee.org backslash donate. Uh, we have giving envelopes, uh, direct withdrawal, giving options. So whatever option works best for you, know that it comes with our gratitude. So thank you all very much. And thank you to those who have already donated to our capital campaign called Under This Roof We Share the Heart of Jesus. So if you'd like to make a donation to cover the roof repairs and other property expenses, please designate your gift as capital campaign. Coming up soon, starting the first Sunday in August, we will begin a regularly scheduled Spanish language worship service led by our seminarian, Josefa Puerta Villacrez. Just like in our English language services, uh, we have uh, translations, ways to help um, English speakers uh, or Spanish speakers follow along. Same thing will happen in our Spanish language services. We'll have uh, English translations. Uh, for English speakers to follow along. So know that everyone is invited to uh, be part of these worship services the first Sunday of each month, uh, beginning August 4th. And if you'd like to help out in any way, please see Josefa. Another opportunity to serve and to help, you can help beautify our gardens outside. We have an event called Mulch and Munchies. Unity is asking any available members to volunteer on Saturday July 27th, that's this Saturday, right? Yes. All right, so this Saturday, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. for a workday of garden cleanup and mulch. Uh, you are encouraged to bring potluck-style snacks or refreshments to share with all throughout the course of the morning. So feel free to come and go as you please, and all the gardening tools are provided. It's this Saturday morning. Today... Uh, we invite each of you to join us in celebrating our new members uh, and connecting in time of fellowship after worship. Not only is it New Member Sunday at Unity, it's also a special day. Today is National Ice Cream Day. I don't know if you knew that. AI told me. I don't think we planned it for uh, our Ice Cream Sunday Sunday to fall on National Ice Cream Day, but that's happy... Uh, uh, coincidence there. But after worship service, our um, Reconciling in Christ core team is hosting our fellowship time outside at the picnic tables right out here. So you can either exit this door or exit the other door and make a left to the picnic table. Um, please come join us for a time of catching up and, and greeting each other and, and greeting our new members. 
And now our worship service continues uh, with Holy Communion as we prepare the Lord's table. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we sing together song 482, I Come With Joy, song 482. Prepare now for the Lord's Supper. All of you who are worshiping with us online are most invited, encouraged to partake in this meal of God's grace simply by having, wherever you may be, some bread and a cup of wine or grape juice. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this. For the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup. Gave thanks. And gave it to all to drink saying. This cup is God's new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death. Resurrection and ascension. We await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory through your church made holy, now and forever. Amen. Church, you may be seated for our online worshipers. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. For everybody, this indeed is the real presence of our Savior, Jesus. None of us are any longer strangers or aliens. For Jesus includes us, invites us in, and makes us one body. No matter where your journey has taken you, know that you are invited to this table of God's grace. All are welcome. For the gifts of God are... We have gluten-free and grape juice options, if you'd like to ask your server for those. And as we come forward to receive communion, we sing together song 778.
And now, church, the real presence of our Savior Jesus, through this meal of God's reign, bless you, strengthen you, and hold you in God's grace. Amen. Our sending hymn today is song number 789, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. While we are singing the song, I invite children, youth, and anyone else who'd like to come up front with me to lead the sending, come on up during the singing. The rest of us, please stand in body or in spirit as we sing together song 7, 8, 9. Church, I invite you to raise a hand of blessing to one another. Let us say the benediction together, repeating after me in the language of your own choosing. Yamada por Dios, called by God. Vaya con Dios, go with God. In the mission de Jesus, in the mission of Jesus. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Praise be to God. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good.
on the picnic table. 